The distributors on the Gen 3 and the earlier jabs have got a multi-piece. You see here you've got this pedestal and then you've got the distributor cap base and then that would mount on the back of this like so, like that. You see it's a three-piece setup. So you've got one, two, three and these bolts go right through. See how it works like that? And then you've got that one there like that. Well, on the Gen 4, it's the same setup, but these are integral. They're cast in. Likewise, this is a casting. I'll talk a little bit about this plate being a casting in a minute. There's some advantages and I believe possibly some disadvantages. One of the advantages is all these standoffs, which can be quite pesky on the Gen 3 and the earlier engines, they're all integral. So that makes things really easy. Um, this plate's really nice too. It's got the pedestals, which act as the bearings or the bushings for the, the distributors. And then you've still got the same distributor bases, but you don't have the pedestal as a separate piece. That's the same setup, it's just a little bit more efficient. The inside is the same, the seal is the same, all this is the same. As I said earlier, these are the same, they're riveted on just like before. It's just that the shaft's different at the end to take the, the, um, the different rotor button. Starter motor is identical, no difference there. So there's the alternator. The flywheel is different. Let's go and grab the Gen 3 flywheel and compare. So the Gen 3 flywheel is an all billet machine plate with the magneto uh, magnets and the ring gear attached. Now the ring gear on the Gen um, 4, even though it's the same um, ratio it, and, and teeth count, it's different. You see? The Gen 3, it's bolted on, whereas the Gen 4, it's not. It's attached differently. It looks like it's shrunk on or doweled or something, but it's not bolted on. The mags are the same, virtually the same, although I noticed that this has got... No, it's, it's, it's the same setup there. Nothing difference. The flywheel attachment is the same um, as before. And as I said earlier, this spider, which has the stator on it, uh, that's ca a casting, and the standoffs are built there, are built in, integral. The magneto coils are the same as on the earlier engines. This engine is, the Gen 4 engine is also running a, um, a Rotec ignition, so I've got the hall sensor on one side, it just sort of mounts there. The, the Gen 4 engine, even though the bolt spacings for the cylinders, which are here, compare it here, maybe I'll flip this one over. So you see the bolt spacings are the same, but because the aluminium cylinder here is not structurally very strong in tension like the steel cylinders are, so we'll just switch over to the steel cylinder. So the steel cylinder runs relatively short through bolts that go through the crankcase and poke out here. And they just poke out the crankcase and just sit like that. And then you just put a nut on here, right? So at the very base, the entire cylinder's been pulled down at the base and the head is attached up here. So the cylinder is acting as a stress member. So under the, you know, the combustion forces, um, the cylinder is taking all the tension because it's, it's strong steel. Whereas the aluminium, that's not that strong in tension. So how they get around that is, is the, much like on a Volkswagen, the studs go right through. You see, they're much longer. But look how long it is. And the reason for that is, that stud not only holds the crankcase halves together, but it also goes right through the entire cylinder head assembly. And, um, and there are four bolts. There's one there, one there, and there's one there and one there. So there are only four bolts holding this together. And that stud, this stud goes right through from one side of the engine to the top of the head, to the right through to the crankcase, both halves, and to the top of the other head there. That's why it's so long. It's got to stretch right across from one cylinder head to the other. Whereas on the earlier engines, 
it's only got to just stretch from one cylinder flange to the next one so it doesn't have to go all the way to the head push rod tubes on the gen 3 they're designed a spigot in there and on the other side of the head you can see here it's the same and there's an o-ring also embedded so both ends of the push rod tube are the same with an o-ring in there but the Gen 4 is slightly different. They've got a machined pushrod tube, which is machined neck down at one end, the same as the Gen 3, and that goes into the pushrod tube adapter, which is attached to the crankcase half. But on the other end there, it's bigger in diameter, and, um, and that sits in the cylinder head, and it's got the O-ring on this, not in the head. And the reason for that is, See, that goes in that much bigger diameter there. And the reason for that is, it's quite clever. They've got the screw here with a big washer on it. When you take that screw out, you can slide the pushrod tubes in from this way. And then, you know, you put your pushrods in and then your rocker gear last. So because that's bigger in diameter and that's smaller in diameter, that'll just fall through there, right? Once that screw and that washer's missing, it falls through. You can push it in fully all the way into the crankcase and you get both sides in, do your adjustments, and put your rocket gear in and all your plugs and things, and then you can just put that screw in there, which has got a washer that just, as you see, eclipses the top, or is bigger than the, the board. It, it, it interferes, or it intersects the, the two circles there and stops this from coming out. That's a good touch, although that would be more difficult to make because that looks like it's had to be turned down, where these are just regular aluminium tubes. Yeah, that, that's a good idea, that. The dipstick's no big deal. That's just got the uh, collector built into it, which you can get on the Gen 3 as well. No change there. As I said, the starter's the same. Yeah, much longer in the, uh, the through bolts. I think that's about it. There are some other little bits and pieces. The distributor cap's the same. You can see the, the oil pickup is the same and the oil cooler's the same. And but the um, distributors caps are the same and the wiring leads, the spark plugs, it's all the same. This engine's got a bean carburetor on it, so that's all the same. But yeah, I was very curious about that. So the big takeaway for me is the crank, the, really the interior of the engine is identical. The crankshaft and the camshaft interchange. And, uh, and, and the engines are very similar. Anyway, I think I've made a mess of all this. I think that's enough for now. I've, uh, if I think of anything, I'll add it. But right now, that pretty much covers it. I think that's the, all the comparisons that I needed to see, particularly with this bottom end here being the same. Now, again, I, I'll, I'll preface this by saying, you know, I, I, Jabiru might be, might, there might be a million things that I've missed, and there probably are. But at face value, this is what I've detected. Um, and uh, there might be some other subtle differences, but, um, but I don't think so. I think the bottom ends are very similar. I will say this too, is that I'm not overly convinced about the casting on the engine plate being the same thickness as the billet. Now the billet material is really strong, right? Because it's solid and it's, uh, you know, it's got good structure in its grains and the way it's, it's sort of the plate's manufactured as a billet. Casting is not the same. And I've already seen some little, little signs of bending on some of these ears on some of the Gen 4. So that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Frankly, I would have possibly, if it were able to be afforded, probably not because of the, the design constraints trying to keep things the same as the earlier engines, but it would have been nice if we're shifting to a casting here to make that a little bit thicker to avoid that from uh, getting bent or even breaking. But again, Time will tell. But yeah, I was thinking as a casting, that's, that's pretty thin for an engine mount. Anyway, I will say this, these engines are beautifully built. I, as a machinist myself, building my radial engines and all my products for many years, I am really impressed with their machine work. It's, 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 it's superb. The crankshaft, I've got to say, is a work of art. You know, it's just like a race crankshaft. Look at that, it's just absolutely beautiful. The machining on the crankcase is gorgeous. Um, yeah. I'm really impressed. I, I'm, I'm certain if you put the time and effort in and fix some of the little bugs, and which the, we clearly all engines have over, you know, 
you've got to iron these problems out over time, but the, the endeavor and the, the engineering is um, it's fantastic. And I'm very confident that uh, here at Rotec, we can represent this motor well and, and do a really good job using our combination of Jabru's um, great design and some of our own ingenuity. Anyway, I think this video has gone long enough. Uh, I was quite excited to do this comparison for obvious reasons. And uh, anyway, I think we'll call it quits now. Unless I think of something later on that I want to add, I think we'll call it quits now and I'll wrap it up now and I'll put these engines back together. I might do another time lapse of us putting the Gen 4 back together just so we can reverse what we did before. Righto, have a good weekend. Bye for now. Just another quick comparison which I thought was interesting is here we have a Gen 4 crankcase half and the billet machined Gen 3 accessory plate slash engine mount. And I've only got half the crankcase here, but look at that. The I haven't pushed it all the way down and I won't, but inside there, there's a little um, a location down. See it there, uh, just in there, between the gap, right? I'm not gonna knock it all the way down. So lo lo the location dowel is lined up with the, uh, the mating hole. Then you've got one, two, three, the, large, the larger um, 5 16th bolt, and then the last quarter bolt fitting perfectly. So the Gen 3 engine, fully machined billet engine plate fits the Gen 4 crankcase. So it's the same machine strategy uh, on this back area here. Same bolt pattern. Uh, now obviously the alternator is different, but the plate's the same. Pretty much tells me that there's no difference between the Gen 3 crankcase and the Gen 4 crankcase. Um, I did touch on the fuel pump earlier. That is in the same spot, and the fuel pump is identical to the Gen, uh, the Gen 3 and the Gen 4 fuel pump mount in the same place and have exactly the same plunger pin and gaskets and uh, operate off the same cam lobe, which is right there. There's the fuel pump cam lobe. So they're the same on both engines. All right, just doing some more comparisons here as they come along. Um, we document them. So here we've got our cast Gen 4 crankcase, which is really the same as a Gen 3 crankcase other than it being cast and bigger potholes here. They're the major differences. But if we take an early Gen 3, one, two or three cylinder, all steel, and just drop its studs in there as locators, we drop them in these holes here, you'll see that that lines up perfectly. Look at that. Now, apart from the fact that the spigots are too sloppy because the Gen 4 cylinder being all aluminium is a thicker wall. Another interesting comparison I found was the, the studs, the cylinder and crankcase studs, you have to go through the whole engine on the Gen 4, are actually smaller so the, than the Gen 3. So the Gen 3, which is the final version of the billet engine with the steel cylinders has got this stud, cylinder stud, which of course only goes up to only goes up to the cylinder flange, whereas on the Gen 4 it goes right through to the top of the head. But if you look at the Gen 3 stud and you measure it, it's 7 16 thread. It should show about 11 mil on metric there. See, look at that. So 7 16 thread there and the shank it's made from is 11 mil, 7 16th again. So there's your 7 16th stud. Now interestingly, on the Gen 4 stud, which is this long one here that goes right through the entire engine and the cylinders and the heads, right to the end of each head, does the same job. But it's actually, it's, um, it's, core it's uh, major diameter is 10 mil, or 3 8. And those O-rings there, those O-rings are designed to sit in the crankcase and basically act as dampeners to stop this shaft from rattling around in the hole there. See, it's quite loose. And that, when that O-ring goes in, it uh, takes up that uh, slack. The stretched area, the shaft of the bolt, the shank, that's eight mil. And likewise on the Gen 3, it's also eight mil. So it's the same. 
but they're, they're head bolts or, or nuts. Again, 3 8 on the uh, Gen 4 and 7 16 on Gen 3. And these being longer, they'll stretch a bit more. And as I said, they go right through, they go right through this way, the Gen, they go right through the Gen 4 cylinder assembly. And there's your stud just there, see? And on the back side of the engine, they go here. They go there, see? It's four bolts hold the entire cylinder assembly down. And on the rear of the engine, they have these little load spreaders on the back bolts near the ports. And they just go here like this, like that. And then the, then the nut goes on top of that, clears, just stays underneath this port area here. Is because the cylinder on the Gen 3 is chromoly and is highly structural, so it can act as a stress member. It can take the tension. Whereas an aluminium cylinder like this is not ideal for that. So the role of these studs going right through the entire cylinder and head assembly is they act as the tension, the stress member. They're taking the load of all the, all the stress. Whereas if you had just a flange here like on the Gen 3, you could have, you would eventually get failures in the cylinder assembly, cracking, falling apart, failing right here. But because that goes right through and pulls the whole thing down, the, the stud itself is doing all the heavy lifting. See here the rocker arms on the two heads. This is the Gen 4 cylinder assembly with the head detached. And this is a separate head that comes away from the Gen 3. The rocker arms are the, the valves, uh, valve assemblies and the rocker arms are identical. Now there is a big difference here though. The way the rocker shaft is held in to hold the, um, to hold the, uh, you know, the, rocker pi uh, the rocker pin, the shaft that bears the rocker, uh, rocker arms, the way that's held in is just with this little centre screw here. So this screw here intersects with the shaft, the rocker shaft, which is pushed in from the side there and there are internal O-rings in there that stop it from uh, leaking oil. And uh, these rocker arms have just got a pressed in bearing in them. There is oil flowing through it, but it's just a plain bush in there and a 12 millimetre shaft. Now what they've done on the Gen 4, which is really nice, is they've used the same rocker arm forging, but what they've done is they've gone down to a 10 millimeter shaft, and you'll have to take my word for it, there's a needle bearing in there, and they've gone down to a 10 millimeter shaft, which has allowed them to run a mechanical bearing. As I said, there's a needle bearing there, and there's a needle bearing on that rocker arm. So the wear, the common wear that Jabaroos get on rocker bushes, which is common for a lot of engines, obviously a, a bush is gonna wear, particularly if the oil struggling to get up there and it's hot and not lubricating that well, which, is, which can happen. But this is gonna be a lot more resilient because these are literally a needle bearing. They'll, they'll never wear out, as long as the shaft is hard, which it is. Now you'll notice there's no screw in the middle here catching the, holding the rocker pin in. And the reason for that is because it's just a straight shaft and the way they're retaining the, the rocker pin is with these uh, screws on these plugs on the side which are tapered and sealed so they don't leak oil. And those two plugs, when you take them out, you can just push the, um, the rocker shaft right out. And so that's how they retain the pin. There's no scalloping, it's just a parallel shaft and it's, held, and it's captivated by that plug and that plug. So you just take out the two plugs and knock the pin out. 